Hey, Jeff Nelson here. Thanks for tuning in. Is big pharma out of control? Well, there's a pill or shot for just about every problem and they want to sell it to everyone they can. But maybe you want to avoid that. Here's a scenario that is not very unusual. Your doctor has put you on some blood pressure pills, and then one day he says, hey, there's a new pill that's come out. I want to put you on this. It turns out the old one that you've been taking has got some problems, so let's change to this new one. Should you do that? Well, you might be thinking, geez, when did they find out that this current one I'm taking has problems? It's been out for 10 years. When did it become evident that this might not be a good drug? And then the next logical question is, well, what if the new drug turns out to be even worse? What if it's more dangerous? How long will it take for them to find that out? And should I take it? Should I be a guinea pig while they don't know? I don't think so, and I'm gonna tell you about doctors and consumer groups that strongly recommend you not allow yourself to be a guinea pig when it comes to big pharma. A big part of the problem is that pharmaceutical companies can be like criminal enterprises. Most of them have a history of releasing products, telling the public that they work and that they won't hurt you, and then it turns out they were lying. They knew the medication was dangerous and they concealed that from the public. One classic example everyone knows about is Vioxx. Attention Vioxx users. On September 30th, 2004, Vioxx was pulled off the market due to increased risk of heart attacks, strokes, and death to patients. It took more than five years for the FDA-approved Vioxx to be pulled off the market in more than 80 countries. Merck Pharmaceuticals insisted their product was safe and effective, earning them billions of dollars, but all the while, they knew their product increased risk of heart attack and stroke by five times. There were many thousands of wrongful death lawsuits that came out of this, and it's been reported everywhere in the media. Eric Topol, a cardiologist and a big Twitter doctor, was a star witness. He revealed Merck had known for four years earlier that the drug was incredibly dangerous and that they had made a decision to conceal this and keep selling it, according to Topol. Someone even made a case study about Merck in 2020 of how big pharma can operate. Vioxx was rushed to market. It was pushed heavily. Somewhere between maybe 50,000 to a half a million people were killed by it. Merck's only interest was profit. And if a doctor raised concerns about the drug and, you know, about the drug in public health, that doctor was neutralized by Merck. Here's a story from CBS. Merck created hit lists to destroy, neutralize, or discredit dissenting doctors. So this is part of how big pharma operates. If a doctor sounds an alarm because they see a lot of their patients dying or being injured, the drug company targets the doctor to try and make the public believe he's a quack or a conspiracy theorist so they can keep making money while killing people. In this day and age, drug companies can even get politicians to pass laws saying that anyone contradicting a drug company's, you know, what they say, that, that they are spreading false information. And these laws are intended to prevent doctors from sharing their medical opinions or experiences if those opinions or experiences conflict with the drug company's financial interests. So it's an old story. Vioxx is just one of many drugs with this story. Avandia came out in 2001, pulled in 2012 with Glaco Smith paying $3 billion for fraud. OxyContin came out in 2007, illegally marketed, making billions while causing thousands of deaths. In 2022, Purdue agreed to a $6 billion settlement for their fraud with Oxy. English cardiologist Asim Malhotra believes his father's fatal heart attack was caused by a new pharmaceutical product which raises cardiac risk just like Oxy. He has some proposals for how to improve the safety of big pharma products. I think this is the downstream effect, my hypothesis is this, of a psychopathic entity that has had increasing unchecked visible and invisible power over our lives over the last three decades. I believe that. And I think the only way to address this problem is to tackle it at the root, which is, for example, my solutions are these, some very straightforward, simple ones. Although drug industry can be involved in developing drugs, they shouldn't be allowed to then test them and hold on to the raw data. The regulators shouldn't be funded by industry. Of course not. And politicians should not be taking money for campaign donations from Big Pharma. One of the primary purposes of government, Tucker, let's just go back to the basics, is to protect their citizens from external aggressors, but also to protect their citizens from disease and to serve the interests of the people. Now, 
could you, as a member of the public, do anything to help make sure you aren't the victim of the next Vioxx or of pharmaceutical companies in general? Yes, you can. Here's advice from Harvard. Few people know that new prescription drugs have a one in five chance of causing serious reactions after they've been approved. That is why expert physicians recommend not taking new drugs for at least five years unless patients have first tried better established options and have the need to do so. Okay, so here's a nonprofit organization, Public Citizen, founded by Ralph Nader, a a crusader for public safety, and every few years, Public Citizen publishes reports about the current level of criminality of drug companies like Merck, Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, and the rest. This was their 2018 report. They started doing these in 2010. Fortunately, Public Citizen came up with a rule for how to protect yourself. It's called the seven-year rule for safer prescribing. And they explain. First, they recommended a five-year rule, but after research, they said five years wasn't long enough. It should be seven years. Here's the rule. You should wait at least seven years from the date of release to take any new drug unless it is one of those rare breakthrough drugs that offers a documented therapeutic advantage over older proven drugs. New drugs are tested in a relatively small number of people before being released and serious adverse effects or life-threatening drug interactions may not be detected until the new drug has been taken by hundreds of thousands of people. So it's simple. When a new pharmaceutical comes out, just wait seven years before taking it and don't take any new drug drugs unless there's a well-documented therapeutic advantage. I would add, don't rely simply on tests or studies performed by the drug maker. They stand to profit a lot, and history shows us their well-documented research can turn out to be fraudulent. You need evidence not paid for, studies not conducted or overseen by a drug company or researchers with ties to those companies when you're looking to protect yourself. And as far as the FDA vouching for that research, no. This is a recent article from the BMJ saying the FDA really falls down on their duty to have oversight on drug company research. The FDA chooses to look the other way, unfortunately, so I wouldn't trust my health to the FDA. In fact, one third of FDA approved drugs are pulled from the market within five to seven years, or they're given a black box warning so people can be properly informed when deciding whether to accept a given risk. I personally know people very close to me who were seriously injured by taking a brand new pharmaceutical that they were told was safe, but it turned out to be dangerous, and they lost their health permanently. Had they followed the seven-year rule for safer prescribing, I feel certain their tragedy would have been avoided. That's what I got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please give me your take on the subject. And if you have any suggestions for future video topics, please post below. Thanks a lot.